All right, so we've been gone for about a week and a half. Welcome back, everyone. Thank you for hanging with us. We didn't seem to lose anybody during that time. Um, I was indisposed in a place where there was incredibly bad internet, and Jack lives in a place where there's incredibly mm -hmm. bad internet. So uh, we we were unable to, despite all of the events that were going down with cause, we were unable to um, to start getting content back out. But we are back in action now. Um, and then, of course, I I am still battling COVID. Uh, so if my voice gets a little hoarse or you hear me jump into a coughing fit, that is the reason for it. Uh, I'm about three days in now, four days in, um, but getting better. But what an awesome, awesome, awesome start to the year for cause and, and just a ton of stuff. I can't wait to get in it. Let's do it. The subject of the talk tonight is the role of government in a free society. There's 17 ayes, 15 noes. The resolution is concurred, and the clerk will read the next resolution. LR 14 passes. While the legislature is in session and capable of transacting business, I propose to sign and do hereby sign LR 14. Mr. Speaker, there were ayes 39, nays 30, excused 1. HGR 5001, having received an affirmative vote of the members elect, hereby declared passed. You cannot say they were some of the greatest writers that's ever lived and come up with a great document and just go, when it came to Article 5, Section 2, they just really didn't know what they were talking about. It just doesn't pass the spell test. So in that case, I'd like to thank Senator Green for proposing this bill, resolution I should say. Thank you, Senator Guth, for, for managing it, and I look forward to signing it today. Thank you very much, and I am going to go ahead and recommend passage. I trust the people in this room and people like you all over the country to preserve this last best hope for freedom east of Eden than I trust any of those damn elected officials. Don't take no for an answer. Demand your power back. And then when you get it, when they call this convention, you damn well better wield it. Yeah, so you know, Jack, here we are with um, with with Wisconsin, which just came out of the blue. Um, you know, everybody, we we put up the video on Nebraska. I've been watching all the Nebraska debates, and you know, I kind of knew Nebraska was coming, and we said that in, in in one of our videos. And then out of nowhere, we just get this alert that Wisconsin went down. I was like. And I'm watching. I'm watching some of the material from the Cause website and, and their YouTube channel. And Rita Peters, who's their VP of, of Legislative Affairs, um, had said that like it caught them by surprise as well. They had no idea it was going to be up for a vote that quickly and pass that quickly. And they they did a little video of just how it went down. And basically, they just kind of out of nowhere they got moved up on the agenda. And then they just, the whole thing took about five minutes to go down. I mean, maybe 10 minutes tops, where they just brought it up out of nowhere and then did a, a, a voice call and they were just marking off as everybody said I or yay or nay. And poof, just like that. Wisconsin was state number 16. I was like, that's absolutely crazy. So, it, but it was, of course, welcome. But the momentum is now going. Yeah, it certainly is. Um... I think we were tallying it up just yesterday, in fact, and it looks like uh, we could end this year somewhere around 24 to 26. I know uh, Mark Meckler of Cause was looking about 24, but I think we had it at 26 if everything goes right. Yeah. And, and you know, I mean, look, I, I realize Meckler is is conservative about all this right so he's been at this for a long time and you know many of these years this is like eight and a half years for him now i think and, and um you know i don't know if it's all if it all eight and a half for him i think there was someone else before him but uh but he certainly has held up the majority uh of the movement and you know so i, I think he's used to getting you know dealing with these people and realizing that things may happen and whatnot. And there are some states, I mean, I have a list here. There are some 19 states left to vote. And, and mind you, 16 wasn't the stopping point, right? Because Nebraska did end up going through. So we got 16 and 17 
um, ready to go, which was phenomenal. And, you know, even beyond 16 and 17, the upcoming weeks, you know, this is the hot season, right? So this is the hot season for, for convention estates. This is when all the state legislatures come in. You know, it's for, for this movement, it's not November. It's not election cycles. It's, you know, it, I mean, it is election cycles in a sense, like Virginia was a big deal, uh, turning their, turning their legislature red. Um, although, you know, that's one of the things that bothers me is that people are following these politicians to the point where it's stupid. Like, like even though polls are showing voters of all, of all persuasion are in support, Democrat politicians and a handful of Republican, misled Republican politicians are still pumping this like it's a partisan thing. And it's really not. Like, it's, it's truly, if anything were ever not partisan, it's this. But like now, it's like you, we still find ourselves looking at these people who can't let go of the divide and, and are just like, well, this is all Republicans. This is what Republicans want. This is what, And they don't even know their own constituents. They don't even know that it's their voters, too. The Democrats were like 55 percent, 58 percent in Iowa uh, that, that wanted to pass. Um, I think overall it was 53 percent across the country were Democrats that wanted to pass. These are the voters, though. It's not the media and it's not the politicians. And I think that's where the disconnect comes in. Right. It's the people writing the letters. And that's why it's yeah. absolutely critical that, that uh, people go to our website, find out who their local legislation is. And write to them, call them, look them up on uh, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. And, you know, that gets a lot of uh, gets a lot of play. And yeah. they take it far more seriously than what people think. Yeah. And I think it's worth mentioning for those, anyone who might be watching this for the first time, who doesn't really understand convention estates, or maybe you were told that the, there's going to it's going to change the whole Constitution and they're going to rewrite it or whatever. It, Convention of States, just as a quick breakdown, is it's Article 5 of the Constitution lays out how the Constitution can be amended. It leaves two methods to propose and one method to ratify amendments. One of the, one of the methods to propose amendments is the way the first 27 were done. Uh, the House will pass two-thirds, the, the Senate will pass two-thirds, and then they present whatever they come up with in their debates. The language, they, they present that to the states and three quarters of the states were ratified. But the other way to do it is instead of Congress, two thirds and two thirds, it's two thirds of the given state legislatures. So the legislatures then um, would all have to pass resolutions. Uh, two thirds of them, uh, which would be 34 states, would need to pass resolutions on the same topics uh, to call for a convention. Congress at that point is forced to call the convention. They don't have any say in it beyond that. I'm dying to see when the 34 states come through to see Congress try and wield power it doesn't have, but because they will, they absolutely will fight like hell to, to take to keep that power. But once those once those states are picked, uh, once those states pass the resolutions, and that's what we're talking about when we say we got number 16 and 17 on board now, 17 states have already passed resolutions calling for the convention. And we've got about 19 more on the docket this legislative session. Theoretically, we could be calling for a convention of states by the summer. But when we when we say it's, you know, it's less or whatever, 25, 24, 26, it's because we're being skeptical that some of these states, you know, some of the ones on here, Hawaii, Illinois, um, well, well, Ohio actually, I think, looks pretty good. Um, yeah. But you got New York, you know, New Jersey could definitely be a dark horse. I, I know that that's no longer state. I know. I've lived there for well over a decade. My family lives there longer than that. And I can tell you right now, that is not, a, they just voted out. A, Bergen County voted red in the last election. I don't need to say any more, anything more than that. Um, but they just voted a truck driver in <laughs> with a $2,000 budget that he used to buy some flyers. And, <coughs> excuse me, and the guy he beat was the longest sitting state senator in the state. So it's not like, it's not like, you know, he beat some schlep. Like he beat a guy who's been winning religiously in, in New Jersey forever. And the dude just got taken out by a truck driver who didn't even try to run. Like, I, I love that guy, by the way. He's like my hero. 
<laughs> but uh, but when when you look at when you look at all these, I mean, Meckler was mentioning Pennsylvania. This one shocked me. So Meckler mentioned that Pennsylvania um, in Penn, he said he was contacted by the speaker and said they were going to move on it. Now we had a video out. I, I what maybe a month ago, a month and a half ago, where they had an open committee session because there was a gun rights activist who was who in Pennsylvania. Um, um, who was under this crazy illusion that, you know, the Second Amendment was going to get taken away if we pass a resolution for a convention of states. And it was the most awkward debate that they had. It was like a roundtable. It wasn't even... So basically the committee that you would usually go to, to to try and get something, you know, try and get a bill to the House and Senate, to that, that committee met because this guy is powerful enough in Pennsylvania that... He's the one that's been blocking it and throwing the, the nails on the road every time we try and drive down the street. And so they wanted to hear the two of them kind of have it out and have their debate in open forum. And Meckler just destroys this guy in, in this debate. I mean, it was phenomenal. He basically just points out and articulates, you know, where this guy's narrative comes from. I mean, the guy's like, there is no protection. There is no supermajority of states that needs to approve this. It's, the, it's not written anywhere. And Meckler's like, it's literally written in the one paragraph. It's one paragraph. It's not, I think it's like one compound sentence. I don't even think it's a full paragraph. But like, it's written directly into the article. And these, you know, this, this is the Constitution. This is not some 1600 page, you know, crazy bill. It's one, one sentence, one paragraph written right in there. So I, I reported at that time. And after watching the whole thing, I was like, I'm liking our chances in Pennsylvania because this guy just got dismantled. And if he was the only one stopping it, we're good. And sure enough, you know, I, I just saw Meckler saying, he said the speaker reached out to him and even he was shocked. He's like, I didn't have to reach out to the speaker. The speaker reached out to me. And he was like, and he was like, and when he did, he said, yeah, we're moving forward on it. Then he gets a call from the chief of staff from the Senate majority leader. And he said, we're going to pass it. And Meckler's like stunned in this video. He's like, he's like, wait, you mean you're going to pass it like pass it through committee or like pass it in the House? Or and he was like, no, nah, just pass it. So it looks like Pennsylvania is going to be on the list. This is a huge, huge, huge month for Convention of States. A huge year, I should say, but a huge session is probably the most accurate term. But like things are moving now and momentum is growing, right? And I think that's what matters for these other states. They start seeing one after the other after the other, right? Yeah, so, George, a question that I have. Uh, if we're in session right now, and the sessions end, let's say, the end of Q1, which I believe they do, wh when is the second session? So let's say we get the 24 or 25. Don't we have a second session coming at the end of the year? Um. I'll be honest with you, every state is different. So I okay. don't, you know, like, this is why I like cling to Rita Peters every word because she does a phenomenal job in breaking down each individual state's process. Like Nebraska had confused me at first because I'm like three readings. Like why do they need to do three readings? You know, but then, but then, you know, then she broke down, you know, which I then verified after, after she said it, was that they only have one chamber in Nebraska. So like, it's, it's just a rarity. Like they have one chamber, they have, they don't have house and Senate, they have Senate. And it's just when it, when it comes to it, in order to compensate, they read each bill, they debate and read each bill three times. Hmm. So rather than, you know, some will do it twice if it gets put on hold or they don't, you know, they're not prepared for a vote, but like, even if they are prepared for a vote, it goes three times. So like, so with each time they were gaining more votes and I was like, okay, after the second one, then I realized, all right, well, this is the same group of people. So if they gain two votes after the first one and the second one, they're going to pass, you know, and, and then sure enough, it did. So the states are very fickle like that. They're very, I learned this when I was putting all the data entry on the website, state by state and different resolutions and trying to see what the status was. And you're getting these terms like, like pushed to the 76th day and you're like, the hell does that mean? You know, now I'm off on a rabbit hole of finding out what that means. You know, it turns out it, it means that they basically put it on hold. 
because there was not enough pressure. I think that was South Dakota where, where they put it on hold. But now South Dakota, you know, is another one now. I oh, know South Carolina, is it South Carolina or South Dakota? South Carolina is, is on the table. They're on the table. South- yeah. No, South Dakota, yeah. South Dakota just passed the house. So so they just passed the house. We got we had them in the intro video. They uh they just passed the house. Iowa just passed through committee. Um, and we use that guy's quote in the intro video as well, uh, because I, I just thought his quote was phenomenal. He's like, he's like, well, there's what people want me to believe is that if there's if the founders were so brilliant. You know, and, and we all agree that the founders were brilliant, and we all agree that the founders wrote this incredible document, and it was so well thought out and, and whatnot. But then at the same time, they want us to believe this one piece that they wrote was just – they just absolutely lost their mind and, and wrote this one piece. And it was and it's, it's a great perspective because it's so true. But, yeah, so he, so he makes that comment, you know, and I'm just like, he's absolutely right. He's absolutely right. Like people want to, people don't touch our, you know, another great one. Our constitution is fine the way it is. Well, two questions to that. Is it fine the way it is before the other 27 amendments that were made to it? Or, and then again, which constitution are you talking about? The, the amended one with all the Supreme Court decisions that's like 3,000 pages long and 13 pounds, or the one that you carry in your pocket? Because Congress isn't working, nor are the courts working off the one you got in your pocket. So right. that's why we need to do this. Because all of those decisions over the centuries have completely changed the face of what the Constitution is supposed to be about. Now, just so just so folks know, if you want to go and research that on the internet, look up the Constitution annotated. And that will take you to that 3,000 page document. It's a yeah, uh, catalog. Cheers. We put in one of our videos with Meckler holding it up and like saying, like, like you may say to yourself, this isn't the Constitution. This is the Constitution. And he's got the pocket one in the other hand. He's like, and he's just like, I wish that were so. We're about taking this and moving it back to something much closer to that pocket Constitution, to the founders' original intent. He's like, and, and it's true. Like people, almost no one knows that that other Constitution exists. Well, one is a, a, a founding document, and the other is more of a operational document. You know, they, right. as time has gone by, it, they've written this operating manual, and they've made changes to it, so much so that it's, it's grown to 3,000 yeah. pages. Is that the actual Constitution? No. Is it what the su- Supreme Court goes by? Yes. Yeah, and this is the problem that I have with precedent. I don't have a problem with precedent in like like smaller legal cases and things like that or ambiguous legal cases and whatnot. But my like I firmly believe each time one thing the justices never do, even when they upheld this stay on the on the vaccine mandate, I read through all opinions and no one ever mentions the Constitution once. The only person who did sort of or at least refer to it, it was clear he was referring to it, was Gorsuch. Gorsuch came out and was like, while everyone else was saying there's nowhere in the in their authority, and they're going through through the act that, that created OSHA. And they're like, there's nowhere in this in this act where it gives you the authority to do this. And no one stopped and said, it doesn't matter if it did, except Gorsuch. Gorsuch was like, even if it did say in there you were allowed to do this. It would still be a problem because it, now we would just be looking at Congress breaching their own authority and delegating authorities that they don't have the authority to, that they don't have the ability to delegate. Like, like something like that, that's world, that's wide sweeping and, and hitting the entire country, needs to come from Congress, not from a regulatory agency, which is a big right. thing that we're that we're trying to advance here in these amendments. And if you don't spell it out clear for these guys in the amendments, they're not going to they're not going to obey. Now, the good news is the amendments that have come out over the years, the courts have been very good about, about keeping to, you know, as long as the, the case is clear. It's when the case gets a little fuzzy that they start getting crazy with the interpretations. But, like, but in the end, I mean, the bottom line is we're on fire right now. Right. 
Yeah, without a doubt. We're moving in the right direction. The momentum's, uh, it, you know, heading that way. And, and, you know, our greatest asset right now is Joe Biden. Yeah, and I've been saying that forever. I was at a cause rally. Um, it wasn't a rally. It was a, it was a meeting um, here in California where we wrote letters to the senators and whatnot. And, you know, and, and you know, while I was there, I was saying, like, lo and behold, watch. Joe Biden is going to be, we're going to all be buying Joe Biden T-shirts when this thing goes through. Let's go, Brandon. I agree. Yeah. Because I, I'm telling you, since he's taken office, bro, the, 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 it's doubled. We've doubled in, in participation. And th this is clearly, and folks, if you haven't signed the petition yet, you need to sign the petition. If you're headed to our website anyway, there's a link there that'll take you right to the cause website where you, where you can go and, and, and click on and go ahead and click on the, They'll tell you who your representative is. You can write them a letter. Uh, they'll send the letter on your behalf even better. So, if, you know, if you're like, I don't want to sit there and write a letter, you don't have to. They'll take care of it for you. That's how amazing they've been. So, but, but yeah, I, I mean, in the end, I'm looking down this list, and, I, I mean, we've got Massachusetts. Massachusetts is hearing it. They already heard me. The, they, they already heard. I, I watched a, a Zoom call they did. Uh, there was maybe a couple dozen people um, from Cause Action, and maybe there were some in there that you know, if you support the movement and you're not a part of Cause Action, I, I don't understand, you know, what you're doing. If you haven't signed that petition and gotten on board, I don't know what you're doing. But like, but in the end, they they were all speaking their piece to the to the Massachusetts committee, and the committee was receptive. You know, it's not like you know, it, it's it's crazy left over there, but yet the committee was still receptive. All right. And, and that's, you know, that's good news. And in, in, in my opinion, now, you know, this is not the full group of, you know, uh, of House and Senate there. But and, you know, based on Dr. Shiva's stuff, there's clearly some significant, you know, questionable behavior going on in that state legislature. But like at the same time, you know, again, it's there. Um, New York's I have to look into New York's because the only one that I found for New York, unless they proposed a new one didn't have any of the stuff we wanted on it. So, I, like, I, I, and I could be wrong. Some of these things are hard to find on these state websites. And because New York is only hearing it now, I'm just going to kind of sit back and wait for them to actually hear it um, to see, you know, what they come up with. And then New Jersey, if you're in New Jersey, you need to get with these guys. I already emailed your senators, <laughs> your senators on my own. But, but you guys need to flood them with emails as well. And be respectful. Just, you know, like one thing Matt Lurie says is be respectful. And, and I think he's right. Is it, these people are close to home. Their state legislatures, are, their, their state legislators are not like Congress people in, in, in Washington. They're accessible. And you can, you can talk to these people. Right. So be respectful, but let them know. Like, let them know that there's a, that there's a large number of people, and, and you know what? Call radio stations, call national national radio shows. Mark Levin is, is a huge fan of of convention estates. Ben Shapiro is a fan of convention estates. Set up groups, start calling in phases, so that you know they get five or ten calls per show. You know that that are all touching on convention estates because every time someone calls, you're reaching thousands of people. In Levin's case, probably millions. But like. But, you know, like these, these are things that you can do. But in Jersey, you guys do not have the government overreach uh, in there unless it was very recently added. Um, they removed it and replaced it with some garbage about the Electoral College. So I don't know if that was like a compromise thing or whatever it was, but it was meaningless because nobody else has Electoral College in their resolutions. So it's never going to be a topic that gets discussed anyway. So just get it out of there and get the government over the chin. Or, or, you know, that's just going to be one less state that we can talk about that amendment. A but, point uh, of, uh, yeah. Sorry, sorry, George. Just a point Go of ahead. clarity for, for some folks out there. So when George says that, that's not going to matter. That one component won't matter. It's important to understand that every single state or every, all of the 34 states have to have the same amendment in order for that to be discussed. If a state like New Jersey has something that's off the wall, 
and no other state has it, it can't be discussed. Right. And that's the protection from this runaway nonsense where each state is making their own rules. So people go, well, why, why does the article not have why, why does it not have the you know specific language instructing the states? Because the entire point of it is that the federal government's not involved in it. The more right. things you put in there that are specific instructions that the federal that means the federal government has to has to manage that. And, and that's not how it works. Right? That's not how right. it works in any phase of our system. The bottom line is, look, e- even, even when people say, oh, well, federal law trumps state law. Yeah, tell that to all the weed dispensaries that are open all across the country. Like when the states say they're not doing something, they just don't do it. That's what it well, comes down to. And, 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 that's, and that's not even legal because it's still technically federally illegal. But the federal government is never going to walk into someone's state and start arresting people on something that the state is not arrested for, you know, and, and and that unfortunately even goes for looting, robbing, and 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 all these DAs that are letting everybody out of jail. The feds aren't stepping in there either. Just as another example, although the right. feds could should step in there, but because it's a just straight dereliction of duty. But <coughs> excuse me. Yeah. But that's yeah the at the end of the day, it's counterproductive or it's a, it's it's not on message to say that we should have a specific rule or regulation when the underlying concept is that the states need to have more individual power. So you Correct. wouldn't write something that says, here's the way all states are going to do something when what we're really trying to do is get every state to have its own power back. Right. And, and the states are going to and like individually, the states are going to put in resolutions to control their delegates. So uh, right into their resolutions to control their delegates. Now, the language in the actual resolution has to be the same. But what they're doing is they're passing side side legislation that's specifically designed for the delegate. So because they can't put all that into each resolution because the language needs to be the same. But they're, what they're doing is they're creating separate documents that are managing the delegates saying, you know, some states, I believe, I forgot, forgot who it was, was it Indiana, I, I forget, but one of the states actually put into their resolution that it was that they would be arrested if they came back with something other than what they were authorized to discuss. It, it's a penalty punishable by jail time. So the states can get as harsh or not harsh as they want. They can bring, they can send as many delegates as they want. So you may see some states send 10 delegates and other states send five delegates. They each get one vote as a state, all right? But they can pick how many delegates they want to send. Um, so it's not like they're picking one guy and sending him. They, they, can, they can send a group, and most of them will, um, you know, to go and start negotiating. And then, it, you know, in, in essence, it works similar procedurally to the way the, the constitutional convention went. It's not a constitutional convention. It's a convention for amendments, but fu- functionally and procedurally, it's a very similar process. All conventions follow that type of process. So, and then once they get that one vote, one state, right? Because this is about the states, right? So this is not an electoral college type thing where you know New York and California get to say more than everyone else. If the constitution gets amended, the idea is to protect the smaller states from the bigger states. And, and that has never been more necessary than now. It was necessary Absolutely. even at the founding, but it's never been more necessary than now. They are polar opposites, the larger and smaller states, on almost every issue. So it's not a matter of, you know, that's the reason why it's set up that way. And, and it should be. And it should be. You see that even interstate. While it doesn't pertain to convention of states, you know, here I sit in Georgia and it's about as conservative as conservative can be. And then you go to Atlanta, an hour and a half away. And so there you have a, a high population. And so when you say, hey, bigger states versus smaller states, it's even big cities versus everybody else within these states. No, it really is. It, I mean, New York yeah. is the same way. New York is the yeah. same way. And, and even California. You know, even like, California. Like, you know, when you get out of L.A. and you get into Orange County and you get into San Diego, now, mind you, I'm 100% convinced that the elections are all rigged. 
I'm a hundred percent convinced that of that. And that's, that's opinion. Okay. It's opinion. I don't have the documentation for it. Although if you go to the secretary of state's website, I, I would encourage people if, for a laugh to do it. You can register to vote with no real ID whatsoever. No, anything on our system, just tell them you're legal and, and they'll let you vote. But like, they don't do any type of, there's no kind of audit. There's no kind of anything here. And there are counties that I know, like everyone knows that Orange County is a conservative county. Everyone knows that. And, and but yet they, they're voting for Hillary. They're voting for Biden. Like, it's just, it's not feasible. San Diego, another conservative city. Really? Who are they voting? Like, like they never vote conservative anymore, ever. But yet they're still a conservative city. It's like when you get into like the Inland Empire and Temecula and, and you know, Corona and Riverside, and like these are all conservative areas, right? You, you see this when you see our sheriff stand up and say, tell Gavin Newsom, I'm not, I'm not using, you're not going to use me as muscle for your mask orders. Like you want to implement this stuff, you send state people down to do it. And we'll work with them to keep them away from our citizens. <laughs> but yeah. he, he basically came right out on Facebook and was like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, and, and good for him, you know, but that doesn't yeah. happen. In, that doesn't happen in democratic cities. In democratic cities, they have, you know, these DAs who just, you know, the sheriff, everybody's in cahoots. They just catch and release everybody, you know, crimes all over the place. It's a hot mess, et cetera. So, but then Democrats always win. They always win to the point where they're a supermajority now. And like the, even the Republicans here are like laughable. They're like, like what? Like, like if you're a conservative in that legislature, you should be blowing a gasket on a daily basis. And these people are like, well, let's talk it out. Maybe we'll meet halfway down. We, we won't blow an extra $4 trillion this year. We'll cut it down to $2 trillion. This way, we only have two trillion spent that we don't have, you know. <laughs> like, and and that reflects our guys in Congress too, though. So I, I shouldn't even just pick on California. That, that's what our Congress does all the damn time. So, Jack, we got some other stuff coming up. So, South Carolina, um, sometime mid February, uh, we we may be looking at them jumping on board. So they're one of the ones that we were adding in, um, and then Ohio. Um, according to Meckler, both houses are in support. I think the challenge in Ohio right now is getting it on the table and actually getting it on the floor. Um, so this is where I get confused. Like if both houses are in support, why is there an issue getting it on the floor? And maybe they just don't see the sense of urgency. I, I, I don't know. But um, Kansas is coming to committee hearing next Wednesday. Um, he says there's great support there. Waiting to flip that legislature in Minnesota. Um, so a lot of stuff going on. And I think the more of these states that pass, you know, is, is the better we're going to, like, the more pressure goes on the next state, right? Like, like now there's 17 states in the list. So they're now number 18. It's got, you know, some pressure here. It's like this momentum. What are you doing? We know we're going to get 18 out of one of these. So we're, we're almost certain to get over 20. And once it gets to that, now you got people listing off 20 states during the debates. Like, are they all, you know, are they all, do they all want to completely rewrite the Constitution? Is that what you believe? Right? So. Yeah. You will we'll definitely know when the momentum has turned so far in our favor, because you'll see CNN putting out pieces trying to destroy it. Right. Until yeah. that, when that happens, you'll Soros know this thing is serious. Right. Yeah. Right now, they don't want to talk about it. No, you're right. They've been ignoring it because they think that it's not gaining any steam. Yeah, yeah. They're just hoping it goes away. But if we continue down the path we're we're going down, you're going to start seeing them, you know, jumping on the horn and talking all about the negative aspects that were written 40 years ago, and and, yeah. and been uh, been pushed out there. Yeah, and it's important that people understand that because this original narrative, um, you know, and this is another thing I learned from Meckler, just from watching that guy, I learned so much history. And I, I have fun going in and validating everything he says and looking it up. And, and like, 
you know, he broke down during that Pennsylvania piece, he broke down where the whole runaway convention thing started. And it started with Justice Warren Berger. And I forgot the woman's name, Phyllis. Uh, this is your era, Jack. She, she was a staunch, a staunch uh, opponent of the, of the abortion bill of Roe v. Wade, conservative opponent, Phyllis something, something with an S. Anyway, she, she was, um, for whatever reason, she writes a letter because they were, they were trying to start a convention movement to, to overturn Roe v. Wade, which is often how amendments end up getting proposed is when there's bad Supreme Court decisions, you know, that's kind of one of the avenues you can go to to overturn the Supreme Court is to do an amendment. And she writes to Warren Berger, who, you know, this was like his champion, you know, he was chief justice. This was his champion. He was on that court that, that passed Roe v. Wade, chief justice. What do you think he's going to say if someone emails him, or we didn't email, but sends him a letter saying, what do you think about this convention of states movement? And of course, his response was, oh, you'll destroy the country, don't do it. And she apparently ran around the country. <coughs> excuse me. COVID strikes again. So she, she apparently ran around the country with this letter telling conservatives, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. I, I think, you know, we hit most of the major points. Um, I, the, the one thing I, I wanted to throw out as well, though, is just, I don't know if we covered it earlier. I don't think we did. The, the three pieces that the, we talked about how the, all the, the legislation has to be the same. But we didn't talk about what they all say. On our website, we have links to every single resolution um, that there is. And if you go immediately after this post, excuse us, because we may not have moved Nebraska and Wisconsin over yet. We're working on that this weekend. Like I said, I've, I've had COVID, so I've been a little behind the times. But, but, uh, but you can go in state by state and click on your actual resolution and see where your, you know, what your state's doing. And there's even links there to go to not only read it, but to like get to the state website where they'll show you where it's at in, in, in the process. So a lot of really good information there as well. But the three topics that are covered are term limits for all government officials. All right. So this includes deep state folks. So don't start with the, oh, we have term limits, they're elections. Nobody elects the deep state. You know, that creepy dude who's been in freaking Area 51 for like 60 years and, and not even the president can go in, but he can get in. That guy. I am just a figment of your imagination. Yeah. Term limits. Right. So and that's to me the biggest deal of it all. Like that's to me, those guys are the ones I don't, I don't, they can always go back to them for counsel if there's a wartime situation or something like that. But I don't need those guys. What are they doing during peacetime? I don't need them being engaged with all this stuff during peacetime. Like let the aliens out of their cages, let everybody, you know, let everybody free, you know, <laughs> leave everyone, you know, bring it back to where the president's in control. None of this, oh, well, he's gone in eight years. That's fine. You can pass the secret on to the next guy, and, and I can keep that chain going. We don't need the one creepy dude around for 50 years, you know, telling, doing things that even presidents can't do. And, and the second one is legislative, uh, not legislative, um, fiscal restraints. So think, think big is how I like to think, like repealing the 16th Amendment uh, and eliminating the income tax, which never should have been allowed anyway. If you don't know the story behind that, we can get into it later. But they, they added that amendment because the court struck it down as unconstitutional, and it is still to this day. The only thing that makes it constitutional is the fact that they made an amendment that, that added it in. And then the, the last one is government overreach. And this one's affecting a lot of people today, too, mostly with regulatory agencies, you know, taking away power from the government from everything they're not supposed to be touching. Department of Education, you know, they have no business in education. You may think they do, they don't. They have no business, all right? You, you can read the 10th Amendment yourself. So regulatory agencies, defanging them, you know, giving power back to the states, right? So you can still have an EPA, but they're an advisory council. They're not, they're not, they're not showing up on somebody's land and saying, oh, we have, a, we have a law that we made 
oh, sorry, a regulation that we made that you violated. So now we're going to take half your land and find you $50,000 a day if you don't dig a trench or do this or that. Like, that's nonsense. That's nonsense. Well, it's it's even impacting, for example, the, the, the First Amendment. Take Jen Psaki just the other night talking about uh, Joe Rogan and Spotify. And how, oh, well, these organizations are doing a good job, but they need to do more. Yeah, they did always the federal government and in what era, yeah, did the federal government ever come out and say, oh, we need a higher level of censorship when it comes to the media or the press? So talk about the cojones as they grow their power. They're treading on, you know, the ice. And really, that's where the momentum is coming from. If people yeah. are looking at this thing, well, OK, you're going too far. And that's what really this is about. It's how far will they go? Second Amendment, First Amendment, you bet. That's where they're going. And yeah, we and need as to do something the about it. There, we need to shut it down. The court there to come up with these crazy interpretations and keep expanding this power and expanding this power. I mean, it's not like the court made one ruling that just blew this power up. This is like 150 years of just constant, you know, little chunk here, little chunk here, loss of freedom here, little loss of freedom, losing another. Well, here's a big chunk. Oh, there's another little one. There's another one. Oh, there's a big chunk. Like, and, and it's just he's ruling after ruling after ruling. It's just always in favor of more government power. And it's like you just get to this point where you're like, okay, it's time for an adult to enter the room. Like, like you listen to these yeah. justices speak. They're not even speaking in terms that are legible to, to a, a regular citizen. And what I mean by that is they don't even talk about the, the citizens sitting there going, but what about this amendment? And what about that? They don't even mention it. They don't even mention it. They talk about some other justice 60 years ago, 70 years ago, who totally screwed it up. And, and then say, well, because he totally screwed it up, we feel some obligation to screw it up again. Like, it's just not yeah. acceptable. Yeah. No, All right. It's not. Well, you know what? We're doing something about it. And, um, it's it's moving in the right direction. It is. So, Jack, your internet, you just get your better internet on Monday, huh? <laughs> yeah, Billy Bob shows. Yeah, yeah, but we got to get Billy Bob out. I have, out I have out. one. Yeah, I have one choice out here. And so. Send a horse and carriage. I don't really. Yeah, and I really don't think that they, you know. They're overly concerned about being Johnny on the spot. Yeah, it doesn't appear so. So, yeah, uh, it's a choppy experience, but we got through it. So, you know, that's fine. Um, <clears throat> all right. So, I mean, that, that, I think we I think we covered a lot of it now. We're, we're going to be coming out with more uh, shorter videos as time goes on. We've just been gone for a while. So we thought we'd just get this all off our chest in one shot and, and then kind of start you know, picking up where we left off. So um, if you haven't already, make sure you're smashing that subscribe button. Uh, if, you, if you're with us on Facebook, please make sure you follow. And if not, we're also on MeWe and Rumble. Uh, the video does tend to show up on those platforms a little bit after the fact. Um, normally the pecking order is YouTube first, then comes Facebook. We'll share that YouTube video to Facebook. We'll upload it directly to Facebook after that fact, and and then we'll go ahead and uh, and hit up MeWe and and Rumble. All right. So, Jack, you got anything else you want to throw in? No, I'm good, George. Outstanding. All right. Well, with that being said, until next time, we're out. <laughs>